Project Management Insights, providing project managers with professional development in the interpersonal skills areas of leadership, team building and communication. Hi, today I want to talk about communication and how you communicate. Do you communicate with the people on your team aggressively? I mean, know what you do when you're gruff and grumpy or you have that tone of voice that is very angry because underneath you are, you're angry all the time. And when you're angry, this anger does come through in your tone of voice and the way that you speak to people. You, When you communicate aggressively, what happens is you have an expectation that people are going to go against you, not do what you ask, and not give you what you want. They're the things that are running how you operate and how you interact with the broader environment, those people around you in your team. That isn't going to work. It isn't going to cut it with the people that you're interacting with. A lot of people, and myself included, as soon as someone interacts with me in an aggressive manner, I am going to shut down and push back or I'm going to meet that aggression with aggression. You're angry towards me and aggressive towards me. I'm going to get angry and aggressive back. Am I going to give you what you want? Hell no, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to fight with you. Is that really going to get you the outcome that you want for your project? My guess is it's not. And I can tell you that it's not. Because if all you're doing is fighting and being angry, and angrily responded to, then there's no way that you are going to successfully get what it is that you're after in order to deliver your project. So being aggressive and communicating aggressively doesn't work for you, doesn't work for the team, and doesn't work for the project. Maybe there's a different way. Do you communicate passively? The person that communicates passively is one of those people that asks for permission all the time. So you ask others for permission, for permission to do what you do, for permission to speak, for permission to gain information, for permission to ask. You're always seeking permission from people. You're not being open you're not speaking in a forthright, forthright's not even the right word, it's more a confident manner. You speak as if you are not allowed to speak. Communicate, take the word communicate, exactly the same. You speak as if you are not allowed to communicate. What does this do? Well, if I'm on the other side, I'm going to consider you an absolute pushover. And I'm only going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. So you're not getting my support in a way that is going to be positive and work for your project. This is about knowing, knowing with inside, inside you that you don't need their permission to manage your project. You don't need their permission at all. You can do this, be confident in your own ability, you can do this and you have a right to speak up and ask for what you want. Do you communicate dictatorially? So you tell people what to do and how to do it, like a dictator. This isn't positive and doesn't work. Because I don't like 
being told what to do. I have a set of skills and knowledge and information and I know in my mind how to use it and how to get an outcome that I believe is what's required. I don't need you telling me how to do my job. You might notice that if you're dictatorial, you might get one of the responses that I've already spoken about. You're either going to get anger and frustration back from me as the team member that you're, or the t- team group that you're interacting with, or you are going to get shut down and people not interacting or not engaging. So being dictatorial doesn't work either. Let the people do what they do best, and that is their job. They're on your project for a reason. Back off. Do what you do and stay in your own business. Don't tell them how to do their job. It doesn't work. Do you communicate unclearly? And this is about not being clear yourself on what it is that you are wanting or needing. Wanting is a better better space to be in and you might sometimes need support. What you want from your team. Do you beat around the bush? Do you um, waffle and not ask or you ask lots of questions rather than asking for what it is that you want? Communicating unclearly has you on the back foot all the time. You're always hoping that the people on the team understand what it is that you need from them, understand when it is that you need something delivered, understand the importance and criticality of what it is that you want. Being unclear does not support successful project delivery. It can't because you're not all on the same page. The only way for you to get your team on the same page is to be clear. Speak out loud your expectations and your assumptions. Put it out there that you have a deadline that you've set and ask the question, is it realistic? Get their input. Have them engaged the whole time. Be clear about what it is that you want. You want the project successfully delivered on time, on budget, under budget preferably, on budget and within scope. How can we as a group make that happen? Here's my idea. Does it work? Is it going to work if we do this? Ask those questions. Be clear. Engage with your team and make them a part of what you are doing in order to support you to be clear because they'll be able to answer questions for you and be able to give you an idea of whether what you're thinking is on track or off track. So the best thing you can do is communicate openly and clearly and from an unemotional place. An unemotional doesn't mean that you don't get what you want. It's the exact opposite. By being unemotional, you will get every time what you want. All you need to do is be clear and ask. So check out and notice how you're communicating with your team. What's your communication style? And then determine whether it is actually being effective, whether how you're communicating is effective with your team members. And if it's not, then have a think about how you might shift it, how you might turn it around and not interact that way, not feel the need to have to interact that way in order to get what you want. If you do that, you might be surprised at the reactions and the responses that you get from your team members. Till next time. Thank you for listening to this Project Management Insights podcast. Be sure to visit projectmanagementinsight.com and sign up for our monthly newsletter or to receive updates on upcoming training.